Hello everyone, Daniel Taylor here. I'm doing my video on rapid prototyping, which is a method of instructional design. It's kind of different from other methods I've looked at and kind of weird and let's be honest a little scary, but don't worry, I'm here to help. I also thought, you know, it would be really neat if I developed this video on rapid prototyping by using, you guessed it, rapid prototyping, so that's what I'm going to try and do. But I only have five to eight minutes, so we'll see how it goes. I have this nice model here that shows all the steps of rapid prototyping. That seems like a good place to start. I'll just put this up here. Okay, the steps. Thank you and good night. So that's great, but something tells me this video needs to have more details, so let's go through the process. Assess needs and analyze content. Okay, what are my needs? Well, I need to make a video. I need a computer to make the video and the appropriate software. I'm doing rapid prototyping, so I need to be able to make changes. Looks like those are covered. Oh, I also need to have this done by Wednesday at 11.30 and for this video to be between 5 and 8 minutes long. Now, what content do I have? Well, I have all kinds of pictures I can rip off the web in my resource document that has the actual content itself, so that's a start. But I can see a problem with my video already. I think I've summarized the topic too well. Some elaboration is probably in order. So let me put the picture up again and say, assess needs and analyze content. In this step, you have to determine what you need to solve the instructional problem and what materials you have to make that happen. Set objectives. I haven't done this one yet. Here you define what you want the instruction to do so you'll know when you're done with the process. Construct prototype design. Here you make a working model. I've already done this once when I put the drawing up. It was pretty weak by itself. Utilize prototype research. You let your customers experience your prototype and take feedback making immediate changes. I don't have a customer here so I'm kind of serving as my own but remember I realized that my first try was pretty bad so I decided to improve it by adding these descriptions. Install and maintain system. When one of the prototypes reaches your objectives, you should implement that prototype. I'm not there yet, I don't think. Thank you and good night. Come to think of it, I don't even know what my objectives are for this video. Fortunately, I have this rubric that tells me the video should 1. Be clear, 2. Be concise, 3. Summarize the topic very well, 4. Not have technical problems, 5. Have high quality, appropriate, effective AV, 6. Play on the open web, and 7. Be 5 to 8 minutes in length. I can already see an issue with number three. There's a lot of material I've left out. Let me add a few slides and maybe I can fix it. Okay, I'm back. Here's my third prototype. Rapid prototyping is a design model where you make lots and lots of prototypes while you're going through the other steps that help you decide what your instruction will do and what you need to make it, and what you already have and what you lack. I'm doing this alone, but rapid prototyping is usually done in a group, and the members of that group all have to be team players and hard workers and willing to go with the flow and not get mad because they have to change something. You move fast in this method, which is why it's rapid prototyping. This is a great method to use for complicated problems with little time to finish or problems that you need to fix, but we don't even know much about the thing we're trying to teach. But rapid prototyping can be expensive, so you have to make sure you have complete institutional support before you start. These are the steps. I've already talked about what they mean in this video. The steps are drawn here as overlapping because that shows that you can start any one of them at any time that's appropriate. Like I started creating prototypes before I'd completed my needs assessment in my objective setting. You can't get wedded to your prototype. Rapid prototyping recognizes that the only constant is change and that your best initial plans suck compared to what is going to come out of the process, so stay loose and don't worry about it. If you make mistakes, fix them and move on. If your customers want you to change things, change them. It's all good. By the way, this is one of the reasons why you need some good design software to do rapid prototyping, because you'll have to make big changes as you realize the need for big changes. And good software will help you make those with little work. That's called plasticity. And good software will help you make changes to one part of the instruction without messing up the others. That's called modularity. You also are really familiar with your customers in rapid prototyping because they are doing the evaluation of your prototypes and you live or die based on the quality of feedback you get. So, at least in this model, the detached scientist in the lab coat with the clipboard who never smiles is not going to cut it. Ask questions, make changes, respond to recommendations, be your customer's testing buddy. So the members of your group make prototypes and evaluate them with customers and then make changes and evaluate the new prototype and so on. And sometimes a prototype may get completely thrown out and that's fine, don't sweat it. Or maybe you begin to see that two of the prototypes need to be merged and that's okay too. Or maybe one of this is just the answer and that's fine too. Eventually you get to the point where you have the prototype that fulfills all your objectives and you get to implement it as the finished product. Wait a minute. Hmm. 
Yes, 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 yeah. Okay, looks like I'm done with this video. Thank you and good night.